Hey folks, my name is Dave Snyder. This is my continuing series on how to customize the Linux desktop. We're starting from a USB drive and then we're ending up with a fully themed uh, and set up dev environment for us to, to sort of build with. Um, last we left off, we had installed Alacrity. We got used to terminal emulators. We also just set up the barest of bare NeoVim configs. Uh, and we set up some fonts. So today what we're going to work on primarily will be the uh, fish shell. We're going to use the fish shell to replace uh, the, the bash shell that's installed in there. Uh, and we're going to start configuring it and start to get our command line, you know, super fun and configurable. And that's, that's honestly like a, a really big part about Linux is working in the command line. So we got to make it good. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, we're here within our desktop. I've got the fish shell homepage loaded up here and I've got our alacrity terminal that's running as well. So the fish shell uh, markets itself as finally a command line for the 90s. Uh, and that's a little bit of, of a dig that, you know, uh, the bash interpreter really just hasn't changed much over the years. Like uh, in a lot of ways, that's its biggest strength, right? People have been writing sort of the same sort of commands and stuff for, I don't know, 30, 40 years or something at this point. Um, Fish came around in the last decade. Uh, and I'd say like, it's, you don't see it used as often. Um, you know, certainly if you're going to jump on stack overflow and, uh, try and find a script that's being run. It's almost always written in shell uh, and it's being interpreted, you know, within bash. So the one downside that I, I will tell people if they are considering using fish is that you're almost always going to need to do like a very, very small syntax conversion when you're looking at a shell script uh, and converting it to a fish script. But other than that, to be honest, like the gains is we're going to see even just out of the box are pretty huge. So uh, let's go ahead and install it. We can show off some of those gains. We're going to do our typical yay des dash s. Uh, it's on the R as fish. And then we can just go ahead and make that installation. Now, you know, you may not really know too much about shells. Uh, if we do a chsh uh dash L that's going to list list the shells that we have installed. So, uh, you know, SH shells coming in there by default bash, which most people don't know is the born again shell. So it's, it's actually the better version of shell, uh, Git shell came over when we installed Git, and now we've got fish that's also installed. Now, uh, remember we've done these fancy tests where we just type ASDF. That's what tells us what shell is actually running. So fish is installed, but bash is the one that's running at the moment. Um, to actually use fish, the, you know, the easiest way, if you're just not, you don't know whether it's for you is you can just type fish, uh, at any time. And it's now, you know, loaded up. Uh, the fish interpreter so that we can uh, start using it. So it says, welcome to fish, the friendly interactive shell type help for instructions on how to use fish. We can do that. And it's going to actually give us like some really nice documentation. And if you're asking me how I pick software, it's almost entirely based upon who has written really nice documentation. And the fish folks have years and years and years really, really done a really great uh, way of doing this type of stuff. Uh, they give you a pretty decent, you know, intro to how to use this type of stuff and what you can do. Uh, they even talk about how you can uh, set fish as a default here. Now, uh, one thing that I've noticed is that uh, they give you some uh, examples of, uh, you know, how you set uh, your default in here. Uh, but it's, it's different from what ours is. So if we did a witch fish, we're going to see that it's actually in user bin fish. Uh, so if we do want to set the default and just to show this off, if we opened up a new alacrity and do our test again, we're going to see bash is running still by default, even though we typed fish up in that other one, it's just keeping it localized within that terminal that we ran, uh, at the moment. So. To get it running the, the, and make it the default, the first thing that we're going to need to do is type uh, chsh s, uh, and then we type out where it is for us. So for us, it's user bin fish. Uh, it says changing shell for Dave. 
we're going to put in our password and it's now going to say the shell has changed. If we open up a new Alacrity, uh, it is not changed there. And we're like, dude, what gives? In fact, even I, I forgot, like, <laughs> did I type it in wrong? What did I do wrong? Uh, and the reality is just like anything else, when you do sort of a big, big change like this, and changing a shell is one of those big ones, right? Uh, it means that we've got to jump in and actually log out of our uh, desktop environment. And as soon as we log back in, um, that shell change is going to be picked up. Uh, and that's because uh, some of these, you know, type of, uh, you know, settings really only run on startup or on login. And so uh, one that you need to log out and log back in is one that happens on login. So let's come back in here. Let's get us back set up. Uh, so we've got our uh, our help page loaded, and then you can see now when we loaded up Alacrity, we have fish as the default setting. So I just made you go do this, and you're like, I don't even know why I needed to do Like, what's the point? Like, what is all this stuff? So what's the reason that fish is awesome? So fish is awesome because, um, first of all, it's giving us syntax highlighting, right? So there's coloring that's just coming out of the box. We can see our Dave at Arch uh, is actually coloring uh, the name differently than the host. Uh, and we can see uh, we're actually getting some syntax coloring here as well. Uh, a big reason though to use it is uh, you're going to see, and you can see it right there, is that it's going to do auto completions for us and do suggestions. So as you start typing stuff, it's gonna be like, well, are you looking to try and finish ls-la? fact fish i am that's exactly what i'm trying to do um, and it's going to be able to do that as you start typing things out it's going to start figuring it out so for example we're going to type cd and start typing d and it's going to say desktop and why is it doing that why is it not doing documents or downloads it's doing it because desktop's the first one so it's just making a suggestion that's in there uh, if we do a tab completion on here it's going to then uh, suggest us which one of these things that we could do. Now, Bash could do that, right? Like it could give us uh, suggestions for folders or files that we might need to complete and, you know, allow us to make a selection in there. Now, what Fish can do that's really nice is it can actually start doing suggestions on um, uh, actual commands from programs. So, for example, in Git, it's already, it's historically saying, look, you've already run at some point, you know, and we did, we ran this clone command in one of the earlier series where we, uh, you know, went through and installed, we cloned the yay repository. But if we just started typing commit, right, it's going to output and finish commit for us. This is something that bash can't do. And just to show how to get back, we can, you know, type bash in there and we're now back in bash. And if we start typing commit, and hitting tab, nothing's happening, right? Uh, now we can go and do that desktop thing like we did before, and it's gonna start filling, you know, finishing it out for us. You'll see that when we do desktop here, it's not giving us like we can't select, right, the things to run. It's just telling us like these are the things that live there. So by default, to me, uh, that is a huge, huge like I really can't overstate. Uh, how nice that is. If you're spending time in the command line, you are going to forget things almost constantly uh, and you're not going to know what commands are and just having like a historical record of things that you've previously run is pretty huge, right? Being able to see that type of stuff. Now, there are a couple downsides like, um, you know, anything that's storing a history uh, is potentially more insecure for you, right? So seeing that type of stuff means we could go through, if you typed a password in here, it might auto-complete it or something like that. That's something me as a, a, a person who's recording a bunch of video, like I need to be cognizant of that, right? Like uh, it could bring something like that up at any time. Now there are ways to manage and clear the history. I'm not necessarily gonna show that off. It's pretty easy to do, um, but that's something to consider. You know, uh, these are very, very nice features, um, but, you know, you might not like that part of it. So what else can we do in Fish? Like, what are, what are the really good things to do? And one really nice thing that you can do is just type Fish underscore config, 
and it's going to load up uh, a browser for us that's going to show us uh, ways to actually change our color scheme system. Uh, we could set these themes on here. We could come in and we could actually change the way that our prompt looks. Uh, so if we just wanted to use an arrow rather than our name, or we, we really deeply wanted to show the location uh, or something along those lines, like we could do that here, set the prompt, and it would automatically set it within our config file. Now, I'm going to show you how to set this stuff manually because I, I while these are kind of okay, I think most people really, really want to set up their own, and it's not that hard to do. Um, so we're going to look through that. The config area is also going to give you uh, the source of all the different uh, functions and variables that are set within your current shell. So this is tailored for you. It's actually running off uh, a local host, as you can see here. So when we come in here and just search for Dave, we're going to see that the fish config directory that's being run is in home Dave config fish. Now, if you remember from last episode, we talked about config files and how different programs will automatically install configs or not for you. Fish is one of those ones that automatically installs it. Now it installs it where most places do in that dot config directory. Uh, and we can start, you know, messing around and editing with that. It's also showing us, uh, various different variables that are set up here. Like what should the fish color of the host remote be? Well, it should be set to yellow. Okay. Like uh, a bunch of those different things kind of get set up there. And so you can see like uh, where are all these different colors and, and that makes it extremely, extremely configurable for us. So let's just take a walk into that config file and see what's there. So again, we can look into config. We can see, you know, all the stuff that's in there. There's a new folder called fish. Uh, and then within that one is a uh, config dot fish file, right? So we can start editing it. Uh, by default, it, it's pretty bare. Uh, it just shows us this if statement, which is, okay, the status, if the status is interactive, you could put some commands or, uh, you know, some functions or something in here. And interactive mode just means the mode that you see when you're, when you're typing into a terminal. This right here, this is interactive. We don't necessarily, uh, fish is going to be running though at all times. Uh, and so if you want certain commands that you don't want to be running in those times and you only want an interactive mode, that's, you could, you know, use it to wrap it. Um, generally, I, I don't worry too much about that. Like if I'm just setting variables, it normally doesn't matter if they're available at the system level, uh, but it, it, you've got the option that you can do it. So let's, you know, write our first little config file here and just learn a little bit about how these sort of things work. Some of this stuff, if you're brand new to command prompts or something might be useful for you in other areas, the syntax isn't going to be the same, but a lot of times they have very, very similar things. So me looking at what's loading here, I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> like, I don't want, I don't want to see welcome to fish the friendly interactive shell every single time that I load up uh, a terminal. So well, let's get that one changed uh, offhand and uh, the easiest way to do that is uh, fish exposes a bunch of different variables for you. I think they may even, do they show it here? It's probably in functions. Uh, whoops. Oh, it's because we shut it down. So let me just show it again real quick uh, so that we can see this stuff. Functions, uh, fish, greeting. And you can see uh, this is the greeting that's being output when we're looking at it here, right? Welcome to fish, the interactive, and it's setting individual lines. And this is a great way to just kind of learn the syntax that's there. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think all that we see up here that we need to know is, okay, we type function fish greeting, and then we can put some echo statements in it. Uh, so I'm going to you know, make the one that I've been making uh, for years and years and years, uh, which for me is like, I, I use my fish greeting as like a pick me up. Like I want to be excited about work. Uh, so I type my fish greeting, uh, to be, uh, let's put the end on it. And then what we're going to do is you can set colors, uh, to the greeting that's going to show up. So for example, 
uh, theirs in here. They probably have type help or something in here. Uh, and you can see they're doing a string replace uh, that's in there. But you can also just set the colors yourself. So I'm going to set the color for blue here. I'm then going to echo, uh, oops, come in here, uh, and in uh, bio, set it to green, uh, digital, actually do it like this so that we remember and then the green then we're going to move to magenta so these are just our colors bio digital jazz uh, and then we're going to color it at the end whoops and what is this last what last color what do we got left what do we got left we got cyan everybody remembers no no, no. jazz Magenta, jazz, comma. We need a comma here. I'm going to put a comma. We're going to set our text as normal. You can always use normal as a color. And then we're going to do our last one here in cyan. And we're going to say man. Uh, and for our last one here, we do not need the N on it. For people who are wondering, what does that end do? Remember, we can always come uh, to our fish shell here. Uh, we can look for our commands. We could come into echo and we could look at the documentation, which is okay, uh, do not, I'll put uh, a new line. So what we're writing here is one of my favorite quotes from Tron or Tron, what is it? Uh, Tron revisited or the, the newer Tron legacy. Uh, so it's going to say bio, digital, jazz, man, uh, which is my favorite line that, that Jeff Bridges says uh, in Tron. We're going to set this. We're going to write it. Uh, and now when we make a new config, it's giving us in our coloring bio, digital, jazz, man. And like, I don't know about you, but like when I'm jamming on the computer, like that's that's how I feel, you know, like you're just making stuff. You're just it's coming from your creativity uh, you know, just the thought stuff that's out there is translating into these bits and bobs that are on a computer. And I've been doing that since, man, like 1986 or seven or something with like a PS1, like in my family's kitchen. So I just, I still love computers and I just want to re be reminded of it. Like every time, uh, that I load that type of stuff up. So that's how we, you know, just set up a greeting on here. Uh, what other stuff can we do? Let's learn maybe about aliases. So uh, you can set an alias, which is, you know, if we're going to come into our docs here uh, and run alias, you're going to see uh, that you can set just a, a very basic alias to uh, be like, this is a command that you want to expand upon, right? So quick one that I always run is I hate typing NeoVim out. Uh, so I just like to now type uh, just V to get something. I always set up uh, a way to get to my config files very fast. So in this case, I would do a neovim dot, what, uh, well, let's make sure that we say we're within our home directory. We would say dot config fish config dot fish. Uh, and what else would we set? That's probably decent enough for our aliases. Uh, let's test it out, make sure that this stuff works. I'm going to destroy that uh, configuration one that we had. Uh, and now let's see what happens when we type fishy and it's loading up our file. So you can use aliases like this is a good way to like make yourself navigate really easy. One really dumb one that I also like doing is I like to just have one that's just called home, uh, which just takes me home, right? Uh, take me home, country roads. Hopefully that doesn't show on my uh, YouTube stuff, but let's see. Uh, home, right? Well, <laughs> let's go someplace first, right? Uh, so we're in config. Uh, we want to go back to home. All right. Now, um, I talked about you know, prompts and things like that. 
Um, there are a couple other things that we probably want to do before it. Uh, another thing that your uh, shell should be doing is it should be setting like some global variables. Um, uh, some of them are going to be Linux specific that need to get picked up uh, for various uh, reasons. So one uh, really good one is we'd like to set the default editor. So anytime that like some program within a terminal environment like wants to uh, send us into an editor, we want to uh, make it default to NeoBim. So for example, let's uh, normally that is uh, set as a editor. And so we don't have one set uh, at the moment. And uh, another one that would be set is, and here's another good example, is uh, the git uh, editor. And so for example, like when you're working with uh, git files or something like that, and it's going to ask you to edit a comment or you know write a comment for a merge request, uh, you want it to open up your editor of choice, right? So these are things that we're going to need to set uh, within our uh, environment. And so to do something like that, you're going to do a set GX, so a global export. Uh, you're then going to say what you want it to be, right? And so for us, it's going to be bin uh, neovm. I believe that's, or is it which? Uh, sorry, which nvim, right? User bin. Uh, so uh, bin will work as well, but we'll, we can put it as uh, uh, that one as well. And we want this set uh, now for get editor as well. So what that's going to mean is that when we come in here and do that echo again, right? Uh, well, let's restart it. Uh, we'll now have that NeoVims running. So again, uh, you need to source your fish file. Uh, to be able to run it. If you ever need to just make a change, like for example, let's change this uh, to maybe Vim itself rather than NeoVim, uh, and we want to see this change, uh, right? It's still gonna be set to NeoVim. What we can do is run a source, uh, and then what we wanna do is source the, source the file itself. So fish config dot fish. Uh, and then now when we do that git editor, you'll see that it's outputting against Vim rather than NeoVim. So if at any time like you really need to do that kind of stuff, there are ways that you can automate it uh, to do a lot of that kind of stuff, but it's just something that's there. So this gives us a way to set, you know, basic variables and things like that. Um, one thing that we did want to do and, and that we talked about uh, setting up though was let's set up a, a prompt. And I'm just gonna copy one here and I'll explain it. It's a little easier uh, than me, um, than me, uh, you know, just writing it out by hand. So I've got one here on my other screen uh, and we are just going to set uh, the fish prompt and this is involved in setting up a bunch of different variables. So. I don't know why I keep closing that fish config because it tends to be useful to show these types of things, but let's look for get prompt, uh, which is not set in here because we actually need to set it, uh, but fish prompt, uh, which is a, you can see the various prompts that are set in here, a fish get prompt. Right, uh, so these functions are all kind of set. They're in there by default. And so all that we're doing is kind of coming through and we're overwriting these things with values that we think are important. So for example, I'm setting, uh, should we show the dirty state? Should we show, um, you know, uh, that uh, something's upstream or what color should the branch color be? And when we do have a dirty state, what should the symbol be? And so we want it to be a lightning bolt and we want it to be uh, a, uh, you know, a uh, arrow or something like that. And so bringing it all together when we were looking at our nerd fonts, right, uh, which we had set up last video, uh, we can come in here and look for lightning right uh, and we could pick something like this and we could uh, replace these things in here if we needed to um, uh, you know to get them uh, running within here 
So uh, you you have now that we have a font uh, that that has a bunch of glyphs and stuff in it, we can use that whenever we need. So uh, what else is happening in here? Once we've set these variables, we are now also just saying we want our fish prompt to show our last status. We want the color to be the fish uh, color CWD. Uh, we wanted to print out the command prompt. We're going to set the color to normal. Uh, and then we are going to append on the end of it. We'd like the get uh, uh, stuff, the get prompt to be put on there as well. And so all of that together, when we look at it says, okay, we're going to get some lightning bolts and some different symbols for depending upon our get status. And there's no fantastic way to show this one off. Uh, other than um, we're going to jump out of here after we've written that file. Make sure one thing that's always good to do, we could either source it or you make a new uh, terminal again so that we can have that stuff. So nothing's changed at this point, but let's make a, let's say we had a code directory. We're going to come in our code. We're going to get a net uh, and you can see, all right, now we've got the branch name. Uh, that's output within our prompt. Uh, let's, you know, touch uh, readme.md file, which would be pretty normal. Let's get add that readme file. And you notice that fish, isn't it fun how it starts auto completing stuff for us? Uh, now that it's done that add uh, for readme, you can, you know, uh, you can see that it added that arrow. Uh, and so, you know, coming back to how do we get to our fish config, we made that alias a fishy. Uh, we can now see, okay, like, um, let's move this one down so that we can see it, turn this one off. Um, we'll see, okay, it's using this arrow because it's got a change state on it. Uh, and so, you know, if we were to get commit uh, dash, uh, dash uh, m, hello, right, uh, well, it'll ask us to do all that type of stuff. You get the point though. It's basically, it's going to now change that state based upon the prompt that we set uh, within this config area, which is super duper nice. Uh, and, you know, gives us the, the very basics of it. So um, this gives us, you know, a pretty good solid thing with it. The last thing that I kind of want to show off is there is a concept called, oh my fish. And oh my fish is um, think of it as like a, a pretty nice little package manager for fish itself. Uh, we can install it by running uh, this curl command here, um, and that then is going to install fish for us. Um, at this point, uh, we can actually install uh, other like fish programs and things on top of it. So. Uh, one that's almost always needed is there's one called fish shell bass. Uh, and if we come in and look uh, how we would actually use oh my fish and install something, uh, we can type O, oh, and I swear I'm going to explain what these things are. OMF uh, bass, wait, OMF install bass. Uh, and it's going to say bass has been installed. So bass uh, is a utility that makes it really easy to use bash scripts within fish. So I talked about it at the beginning of this type of stuff. Sometimes the reason that people don't like fish is because it can't run shell scripts and shell scripts are 99% of what you're going to find on the internet. Um, you know, and so you, how, how do you run them? Like if you just find a useful bash script uh, that's out there, like how, how would you actually run that type of thing? So as a good example, um, you know, let's say, uh, let's make a, uh, well, it probably has a pretty good example for us in here. So uh, you could type, for example, bass export x3 and then go back to where, sorry, where we were. Now we can uh, echo and look at what X is set as, and we can see that it's been set. So this is the very, very base example. So what we're doing here is we're using 
you know, when we were normally setting stuff within the shell script, the fish scripting language, uh, we're using our exports by saying, uh, we need to say set, you know, uh, dash, and then we need to say GX or X, right. To be able to export, but this is using bash syntax, uh, to, which is a little bit more formal and, uh, you'd write export and then we're exporting the X variable as three, which now means, okay, uh, we've been able to run that within uh, bash that now is being, uh, can <laughs> that is now being interpreted within fish. So what this means is that, uh, where I tend to use in their example is exactly here is. Uh, if you're working in TypeScript or you're working in JavaScript and you're using NVM, which is the node, uh, you know, ecosystem, you know, to set your uh, virtual environments for your node environment types of things, they give you shell scripts when you run and do those installations, which again, that's the more uniform thing. That's why they provide those. You don't want to rewrite these things in fish. How can you just run them? Uh, and it makes it as easy as running, um, uh, you know, bass and then writing, uh, writing the bass and then, uh, invoking the shell script afterwards. So super duper nice. There's a lot of really, really nice stuff, um, that comes with, um, Oh my fish. There's, there's a lot of different packages, uh, that you can find that are out there. Some of them are really just to, uh, set up, you know, auto completion things that are out there or, uh, therefore, you know, just really neat little scripting things that will make your, um, terminal environment a lot nicer. So go on forever about this type of stuff, but that's a pretty good intro on this. We're kind of at time. Um, I'm pretty excited though. Cause you know, I'm, I've always told people like, don't use fish. Don't do what I do. But now that I can kind of show and say, Hey, this is, this is why it's kind of awesome. Um, this is, this is going to be really neat. We're going to add a lot more to this config file over time, but we now have it installed and, and can kind of jam with it. So, uh, we'll see you on the next video. Uh, I hope you've, you know, been enjoying this type of stuff as much as I am. It's, it, it's fun building this stuff out from scratch. I'll see you all.